Lord's Day devotion for the week beginning Sunday, January 28, 2024, LDD number 38. It's all about discipleship today in the church. The church worldwide is growing everywhere. Literally, there are Christians, at least in embassies anyway, or consulates in every nation of the world. Now, discipleship is a very important subject Obviously, if you know anything about the Bible or you know anything about Christianity, there are some common misunderstandings about discipleship, even by some Christians, which I'm going to cover in this video. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you call this Heavenly Father to not only be saved by Christ Jesus, receiving the free gift of everlasting life, Jesus crucified for our sins, victoriously raised from the dead, justifying our faith and, and proving that he's our Lord and Savior. But you've also called us, Lord God, to come together as a church in unity and in love and show compassion toward the world and make disciples of Jesus. Help us, Father God, to have a better understanding of being a disciple and what it means according to your will in relationship to the Word of God written in the Bible and how it's manifested in the church as well as what we can do today in our own lives. We pray, Father God, that you bless the listeners and viewers of this video. I pray, Father God, that everyone have a closer walk with Jesus as a result of this video. I pray, Father God, that everybody understand the role of the disciple in the eyes of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now there's four major areas that are going to be covered here. First of all, what is a disciple? Okay, that's a very, very important thing. Now it's, it, it, it's not as simple as it seems on face value, okay? Number two, what ultimately does Jesus expect of his disciples? What is the ultimate goal of being a disciple? Number three, what about the spiritual leaders of the church? What is their role in relationship to discipleship? Number four, let's look at actually the discipleship itself and what we need to do in discipleship. Okay, so let's go to Acts Chapter 11, by the way, um, the scripture references are in the description. If you need it, feel free to pause the video and look up scriptures in your cell phone, by, you know, computer, or Bible, or whatever, right? As always. Okay, Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through 30. Now, the context of this is that Peter fell into a trance by the Holy Spirit, which was deliberate which was intentional. It was God's will. He was surrendering so fully to God that he forgot about his flesh and he was so into the spirit that he, he came into this direct contact with the spirit realm, specifically the Holy Spirit called the trance. And God gave him a vision of um, various kinds of animals that were beasts and, and unclean. And the Lord said, you know, Take and eat, Peter. And he said, far be it for me to do this, Lord. I've never eaten an unclean thing in my life. And to make a long story short, God showed Peter that the time had come for the non-Jews, those who are not Hebrews in the world, to, to no longer be considered unclean. They are now considered to be approachable, and ripe for the harvest of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a fantastic story. Now let's go to verse 19. There was a persecution that arose as a result of the boldness of, of the disciples, the followers of Jesus. That's the context of this. Verse 19, now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, 
who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also preaching the Lord Jesus. Hellenists weren't necessarily ethnic Greeks, but they certainly were at least members of the Greek culture. They could be, you know, partly Greek ethnically, maybe no Greek eth ethnically, but they were at least following the Greek culture, okay? In verse 21, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, who later became Paul. Is that the same Saul? Study for another time. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. Notice no distinction between you know, apostles and disciples, or pastors and disciples, or evangelists and disciples, or prophets and disciples, or teachers and disciples. They were just all called disciples. And at Antioch, they were first called Christians. Now, in these days, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples, notice general term, okay? So the disciples determined everyone according to his ability to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. And they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. All right? Now notice that in verse 29, so the disciples determined everyone according to his ability. So the disciples determined everyone according to his ability to, to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. There wasn't any, when, when they called one another disciples, there wasn't any distinction among, you know, there was no hierarchy, you know, um, a pastor wasn't above everybody else and no longer called a disciple. He's still a disciple of Jesus, right? The definition of a disciple, somebody who's a scholar, who's an who's a ardent, studious follower, follower of a particular person, all right? In this case, it's a follower of Jesus, a very dedicated follower of Jesus. Now, Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the 11 disciples, notice there was 12 main disciples, the closest inner circle of disciples, but Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. So there's 11 left. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when he saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age, to the end of the age, clearly indicating beyond the biological life of these disciples. In other words, the whole church through, through the centuries, even to today and God willing a bit more into the future until Jesus comes, okay? Notice disciples. This is the closest inner circle of followers of Jesus still being called disciples. Take note. All right, now let's go on. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 16. What are the roles of the church leaders? Okay. All right. We already determined that pastors and so forth are still considered disciples. We're all disciples of Jesus. All right. Regardless of our spiritual maturity, even apostles. Okay. So verse four, Ephesians chapter four, verse four. There is one body, that's the assembly of believers, all of us worldwide, 
and past, present, future, okay? There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Notice not according to our ability, according to Christ's gift was ability given to us. Verse 8, therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of, of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he also ascend, descended into the lower regions of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some to be apostles and prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Notice, that's a time for the future, okay? So this discipleship goes on. We all need it, regardless of our, our level. No, notice that it says right here that these different, um, sometimes called offices, I don't really like to use that, but I like to call them roles, in the church, in verse 11, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. To equip the saints for the work of the ministry. They're not supposed to do all the work. They're supposed to equip us to do the work. Follow that? All right. Now, now notice also, it says saints. It doesn't just say saints except for these offices or these roles, except for the apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, which means pastors and teachers. And there's no exception there when it means it says saints. That means all these apostles, okay, apostles building up other apostles, apostles building up pastors, pastors building up apostles. <laughs> See, see my point? It, it, it's God is no respecter of persons. Uh, the, the, the same word of God is available to all, the same spirit. It's one faith. We're one body of believers. We're all disciples of Jesus. All right. Lastly, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews was um, a book by the Apostle Paul that was written specifically to Hebrew Christians who had received Jesus as Lord and Savior. However, um, it, it's for everybody, of course, because all, all the word of, written Word of God is for all of our example and teaching and uh, instruction and even correction. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Okay, now... The Apostle Paul had been talking about the, the role of Jesus Christ. Okay, he's talking about the fulfillment, the fulfillment of the prophecies. He was talking about the faith. All right, he's going very in depth in a debative kind of detail. Okay, and he says here in verse 11, chapter 5, verse 11, about this we have much to say. 
and it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment. Notice this, trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. I'm going to repeat that last verse, verse 14. Chapter 5, verse 14 of Hebrews. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment, trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Sounds like discipleship to me. Constant practice sounds like discipleship, being a disciple, disciple of Jesus every day. That's it for this video. It's a little longer than usual, about 16 minutes. I want to show you something to encourage you and inspire you. Christians here in St. Paul, Minnesota, okay, are talking about revival like Christians are all over the world. Over there, two miles away is downtown, downtown St. Paul, the business district of St. Paul. I'm in a high rise up here. I pray over St. Paul every day, every day for revival. Join with me, like, subscribe, share button. There's a share button. If you subscribe, push the bell in the subscribe box to, to get notifications, okay? Instant notifications, okay? This is a ministry that will bless you and you bless other people by uh, making this begin to, to attract people, okay? Attract followers of Jesus. That's all for now. Have a great week. The next video is on the power of the word. The next Lord's Day devotion, the power of the word. Be encouraged. Walk with Jesus diligently each and every day. God bless you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Oh, the tip, the tip. There's a song I want you to check out. It's called Alive by uh, Big Daddy Weave. It was popular about four years ago. I just re kind of rediscovered it. Alive by Big Daddy Weave. It's a great contemporary song. See you next time. God bless.